first off, I just want to say, well done. Well done for clicking on this video. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you guys can probably tell from the title, today I'm bringing you guys how I revise A-level chemistry and how to gain AA star in A-level chemistry. So I'm assuming that since you have clicked on this video, you are either studying A-level chemistry, you're thinking about studying A-level chemistry, or you're going to be studying A-level chemistry. And well done. Well done for clicking on this video because you have taken the first step. You care. A levels is hard, like it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. We all know that, I'm sure you've all been told that, but it is not impossible. It is definitely, definitely doable. And so I'm here to make the journey easier for you because some of the things that I'm gonna be saying in this video, I wish people said to me when I was in year 11, year 12, year 13, and I had A-level chemistry in my life. A little introduction about me and who I am. My name is Fidra, my channel is called Fee Talks, and I do study videos, rant videos, lifestyle videos, beauty videos, everything, 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 everything. I studied A-level biology, chemistry, and English literature, and I'm gonna be studying medicinal chemistry and pharmacology at university. <laughs> introduction to A-level chemistry. You might be doing different exam boards but the basics are still the same. A-level chemistry is split up into three sections, physical chemistry, inorganic chemistry and organic chemistry and each of these sections has a AS section and an A2 section. AS stands for year 12 so AS is the content that you're going to be learning in year 12 and A2 is the content you're going to be learning in year 13. If your institution does do AS exams then you'll be doing two A-level chemistry exams at the end of year 12. The year 12 exam the first paper will be physical and inorganic and then the second paper will be physical and organic but this is only if your school chooses to do that my school didn't do as we didn't do as level we'll just do one straight examination which is at the end of year 13. if your school does sign you up to do an as level so you do do an exam that at the end of year 12 that will not go towards your year 13 grade your year 13 grade is the grade that determines what university you go to however the exam that you did in year 12 has nothing to do with that every single person will do a year 13 exam and that is three exams. In year 13, your first paper will be physical and inorganic. Your second paper will be physical and organic. And your last paper will be all three of them. So a mixture, synoptic, and also you will get assessed on your practical skills. Like I said, every single person will do a year 13 exam. Every single person, well, not every single person will do a year 12 exam, depending on your school. So what is these, what are these three sections that I keep talking about? Well, physical chemistry, if you're coming from GCSC, it's sort of like your quantitative chemistry. Um, I think that's what it was called. It was all to do with numbers. You're dealing with a lot of numbers with physical chemistry. And it literally applies to every single part of chemistry. It's technically the math section. And as you can tell by the name, physical chemistry, there is sometimes a bit of physics involved. Inorganic chemistry is literally the chemistry of everything. Um, it's the chemistry of inorganic molecules and inorganic molecules is a molecule that doesn't deal heavily with carbon and organic chemistry is the part of chemistry that deals heavily with carbon that element carbon so organic synthesis all that kind of stuff you'll be going into much 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 more detail when you hit a levels so yeah that was a little introduction for people thinking to study a level chemistry and for anybody that's going to be studying a level chemistry um so i hope that was informative <laughs> We're going to be very transparent in this video. I'm going to be so, so, so truthful. I'm just going to tell you guys, sometimes, yes, I did fail. And sometimes I did really, really well. And when it got to nearer to the end, I was doing more better than I was before. Before was a bit inconsistent. But we're going to get into it in this video. So the first part is learning content. For most people start the A-level chemistry course in year 12 and in year 13, actually, with physical chemistry. In year 12, they're probably going to be starting off with physical chemistry. And in year 13, you're probably going to be starting off with physical chemistry. I rarely hear people starting off at different sections. So this part, it's very, 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 very math based. You're going to be dealing with a lot of numbers. You're going to be dealing with equations. You're going to be dealing with multiple equations at one time. You're going to need to make sure that you're good with your numbers. So with something like physical chemistry where you're learning content, I thought I would put in physical chemistry because physical chemistry is a bit different to inorganic and organic. I used this book. I'm gonna, this is my first recommendation because this is amazing guys. Like for me, I'm not a mathematician. Like I said, I did biology chemistry and English literature. This book really, really helped. I didn't have this in year 12. I had a really, really good teacher in year 12. I was already quite good with physical chemistry, but if I had this in year 12, I would have been even better. This is the calculations 
in AS and A-level chemistry, Jim Clark. Even if you're good with maths, I will still suggest that you get this. I'm even going to be keeping this for university. That's just how good it is. But yeah, so you would usually learn content, obviously, your teacher by teaching you. However, I would always pre-read before lesson. Pre-reading is when you literally go ahead of the content sort of thing. Not too much about maybe like um, a topic or two ahead of my actual class. A lot of us did that. It really, really helps because you're going to spend less time having to figure it out in class. Timing in A-level is so important. You don't have time. You have two years and there's a lot of content. You're doing three to five subjects depending on who you are. You don't have time. So you want to make sure that you're making your time more secure. So pre-reading before lessons, you already have the content in your head. You already know what you're going to be taught. So in lessons, it comes to you quicker. It really helps and it's also scientifically proven. So I would really recommend it. And that's something that all of us did. I would always pre-read even if i wasn't even ahead in my revision something that i would use to pre-read is snap revise snap revise is literally a website with like it's technically like mini tutors like it's so good they also have their own revision guides there and they also have like summary pages like the pages where you they literally summarize the whole content and like they just summarize the whole topic it's really really good and i would sometimes use the little revision guide or the summary content to pre-read and also pre-reading is good because in class your teacher's gonna be asking you questions that's like, good they're gonna be shooting questions at you in it and when you can't answer the questions you feel like a fool you don't want to do that so when you come in there and you're answering the question you're gonna feel bad in it you're gonna feel bad you're just gonna be like mm. you try to catch me out Pre-reading should not take more than an hour to do. If you're already ahead of the content in your revision, then obviously that's a different situation. But if you're literally just reading, then it should not take you more than an hour to do. I would recommend Snap Revise and um, any chemistry revision guide. I had the CGP revision guides. Here are the revision guides. It consolidates the content really, really well. So I have a year one then and a year two. Okay, now it's time for revising content. you're coming from year 11 you're gonna be doing way more revision so revising content really depends on what kind of learner you are so people learn more when they hear things people learn more when they just read things people learn more when they rewrite things that they're reading and um, people learn more when they watch things it's literally scientifically proven but I found out that I am a rewrite learner and when I watch things as well it helps me to learn so after lesson I would do my notes and that will take me about two hours to do that was fine for me two hours maximum to make notes notes for myself and this helps me to like retain information and to understand as well because you're in the process of trying to understand that topic i would make my notes from like different sort of resources as well i would use one video i would use one revision guide and i would use one online website those are my three so usually the three that i would go for is chem guide as a website a uh, revision guide is my CGP revision guide that I just showed you guys and videos on snap revise obviously I wouldn't write things that I would already written down but that really helped for me to get like all of the information that I possibly can because you don't know what questions they're going to ask you in the exam like they will ask you something that wasn't in a revision guide it wasn't in the video but it was in something else but then it was in here but then it wasn't there and then it wasn't there they do that they do that I like to make sure I had everything and I'll also use my specification as well to revise content any like Definitions they put on there, the specification post definitions a lot. All you have to do is go in the website of your exam board um, and they would put the specification there. The language that they use in the mark scheme is literally the language that they use in the specification. So I would make my specification my primary source and then from there I would branch out to different places. However, obviously the specification doesn't tell you everything, but whatever is definition wise, I would go based on the specification. And then after I would make my notes, after I would do all of that, I would then make flashcards on Quizlet. And I think this stage was literally what changed it for me. I never did this in year 12. I started doing this in year 13 and my grades were so consistent. And I would go on a, on a website called ChemRevise. Now, I personally think this is one of the best online resources for chemistry that like you might not even need to buy anything you can literally just use chem revise i can't believe that person put that up there for free like i am so surprised but i would use a website called chem revise to make my flashcards and i would make my flashcards on quizlet quizlet is great i made every single sentence into a flashcard if i had to obviously i'm not going to drag it but i literally made every single sentence into flashcards and then usually it'll come up to about 30 flashcards and then i would click the learn button on quizlet there's a learn button and i would learn the flashcards Quizlet has set in place active recall methods neurological methods in order for students to learn things and i would learn those flashcards that really really helped me that really really helped me and if chem revise was missing anything that my notes had i would then make my notes into flashcards flashcards as well so first I would you know make my notes and then I make flashcards and then my last step in my system is to do exam questions now here's the catch you probably already heard 
A levels, you have to do exam questions, 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 you have to do exam questions. You've you probably already heard. However, here's the catch. Here's what they don't tell you, especially for the new A level, to use exam practice as a revision tool. There's a difference between just doing exam questions and actually using it as a revision tool. So using exam questions as a revision tool really really helps i think it was easier for me because i had my ipad i do take digital notes however if you don't you can literally do the same thing that i'm doing because obviously not everyone can get an ipad and everyone can get a tablet and a pencil my favorite websites for exam questions is physics and maths you are science school maths made easy and exam pro here's how you use it as a revision tool instead of just using it as like exam questions so what i would do i would get a pack for just that one topic so just that one topic you, you don't have to do a whole paper you get a page and then you download it or you print it off with whatever then you have it there and then you get your notes and you use your notes to do a few questions by a few questions i mean question one question one b one b question two two b and question three maybe do like three questions with your notes you have question one but then you have one b one c two b c you know what i mean so you do the whole of question one and question two maybe and then you mark it you mark it and then you see where you went wrong and because it's a pack of that whole topic you're going to see a question similar to the ones you went wrong again because you've already marked question wrong and you see where you went wrong so when you do question three and four um you're not going to get it wrong i found that this really really helps especially for like things like organic chemistry which is quite definition based and this is also really really good if you have something in your notes for example if you learn a definition and it's in your notes however the definition that's in your notes doesn't comply with the mark scheme you can then replace the definition that's in your notes with something that's in the mark scheme and if you see that you're constantly getting something wrong you can go back to your quizlet flashcards and you can make a flashcard out of that exam question that's literally what i would do like once i get an exam question wrong i'll make a flashcard of that exam question so when i have to revisit this topic because i have like a test paper I would technically have the places where I've gone wrong in my flashcards so that meant that the places where I've gone wrong is the places that I'll technically get right in my exam. I hope that wasn't too wordy um, obviously I'm going to have illustrations and videos and everything of me doing it by myself so you guys can see but that's literally what I do and that's for revising, that's for revising content and that was my three step system, making notes or however you guys retain information, then making Quizlet flashcards the way that I made Quizlet flashcards and then using exam practice and questions and mark schemes as a revision tool instead of just um doing it passively because a lot of people were just doing it passively and that would work for the old a level system the new a level system it's not like that another thing that i did with exam questions i didn't just do aqa questions i also would do edxl and ocr questions and this really helps me i don't want to say aqa copy edxl and ocr but there's a lot and a lot of you know overlap but the mark schemes are different that's my revising content and that's literally the three step plan that i use and i also use the same step plan for biology a levels is about application you are going to need to apply your knowledge and the only way you can do that is doing exam practice and practice questions once you've done what i've said to do that shouldn't take you more than an hour to do in my opinion you should then just do exam questions by yourself without your notes you can then make a little test paper for yourself like, like a little unit test paper for yourself i would really recommend this textbook this is the Lister and Ravishaw textbook Oxford textbook once I would revise something and I knew that I knew it well I then do the practice questions at the end of a topic they have practice questions and the practice questions are really really good I won't lie to you it was just a way for me to have more exam questions to do and more exam practice another thing that I'd recommend is once you've obviously finished a topic with your class with your teacher or by yourself and you go on to the next topic what you can do you can have exam questions from what you were learning last week in your new exam question so this means you're continuously remembering continuously retaining and you should also make plans to always go over your flashcards trust me although this sounds overwhelming it's absolutely fine and it makes you feel more productive like it makes you feel better it's like yeah i know this now i know it and i know it well i think i've spoken about exam practice enough yeah i feel as if people just put a lot on a lot of emphasis on like doing exam questions always do exam questions make sure you're doing exam questions to the point where people weren't doing exam questions correctly the new a level system is different if you just do exam questions it's not effective to just to just go through them just mount through them my grades um literally changed when i started to look at exam questions differently although it might have been too late because my exam got cancelled do not ignore any piece of detail <laughs> the video where i'm talking to you guys about resources to use i did a lot of research into like what resources to use and whatnot so i would suggest you use something called chem sheet either you buy it yourself or you get your teachers to buy it your school can literally buy it and then give you all the resources for free my school bought it so i would literally email my teacher i would say 
hey Mr. Butcher can I please have chem sheets for thermodynamics and it will literally cover the whole topic when you get to year 13 and you'll be doing a paper 3 and this paper 3 is literally them focusing on your practical skills and it's harder than you think it's harder than you think it's one of the hardest papers and it's also one markers Woo! chemistry one markers were my enemies oh my god chemistry one markers were my enemies I would really recommend that you guys get these two lab books this one's really good because it shows you the calculation and any of the, the skills involved after practical that also links to that topic every topic has a practical link to it you'll be doing i think it's like 12 practicals i don't know and this one is the um practical chemistry chem sheets guide the chemistry guide is really really good as well so i would recommend all of these another resource youtuber that i would use i'd recommend is my chem guy this guy is great oh my gosh he also has practical videos there as well everything everything that i've shown you in this video i recommend like i highly recommend okay so now advice to year 12s advice to year 12s do not be lazy do not think this is like 11 take 11 take secondary school out of your head no like they kind of lie to you in secondary school you're gonna find out <laughs> i'm only gonna spoil it for you yeah like, it's a different ball game but do not be afraid as well that like, i entered quite afraid um, and that really put my self esteem down when I knew I could do it and that was actually quite good as well and also do not be afraid of failing if you are so good at GCSE and now you're not doing that well at A level it is fine it is okay to fail like you will fail but don't let that failure put you down A level builds character work smart instead of working hard you can work hard you can put in all the hours and still fail I'm not even trying to scare you in it yeah. um, always identify your mistakes do not ignore your mistakes because I promise you the thing that you th find hard and bad the thing that you don't work on is the thing that will come up in your exam I'm promising you that I'm, pr I'm promising you that make sure that you are always working on your weaknesses do not overlook any of the practicals you learn in year 12 do not overlook any of the practicals you learn in year 12 I promise you I was doing practicals for fun I was like obviously you don't need to worry about any paper free in year 12 just like small 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 practical distillation here and there maybe reflux you know maybe test this iron test that iron yeah 13 hit now i was not smart if you're in year 12 do not overlook the practicals yeah so just make sure you revise practicals as much as you revise content as soon as you revise the content dedicate some time to revising that practical going over that practical thinking about the skills associated with that practical think about everything guys trust me practicals will hit you in your face year 13 i promise you the jump from year 12 to year 13 exists it's there it's happening it's wide it's big it's a big one the, the content gets harder it gets harder, it gets rough. You're going to be putting in more work in your 13. Uh, do not forget about your 12 content. Oh, guys, don't forget to be revising your 12 content. Do not forget about your year 12 practicals. Do not forget about your practicals, guys. Don't forget about your practicals. Listen in class, guys. Ask your teacher for the PowerPoints. Ask your teacher for the PowerPoints. That like, I sometimes even made notes for my teacher's PowerPoints. Like, they were good. Maximize the amount of exam questions you make available to yourself. What you can do is after you do an exam pack, the questions that you've got wrong, you can log it in. I would log it in into something called um, Google Sheets and I had like a to-do list there. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll have everything that I mentioned down below in the description where you can buy it, website, everything. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.